Joe. First time, of course, in 2016, but for the 23rd straight year. And that is an amazing thing in itself. A massive show coming up. In fact, a massive year coming up. Going to get to all of that in just a moment. But a different start to the show tonight. So I wanted you to put your hands together for two greats of the Geelong Football Club, Bill Brownless and Sam Newman. It'd be fair to say, Jim, we are caught between a rock and a severely hard place. Yeah, well... Because there's a, a private aspect to this and, of course, there's a very public aspect to it. And uh, the public aspect we're going to cover because uh, that's what we should do. Well, we need to point out to people who may not be aware that uh, it's been a very tough couple of months for two families that we hold very dear at the Nine Network, the Brownlesses and the Lions. A couple of different layers to it. The first being, of course, that Gary, our uh, great colleague's relationship with Nikki, Bill's ex-wife, has advanced or had advanced. Um, and added to that layer is, of course, the fact that Gary's health has deteriorated to the point where he can't be with us tonight. He is, in fact, receiving ongoing treatment and doing it very tough. But as you say, Sam, uh, double standards never been what the footy show's about. If this had occurred with other people within footy, we would have them on and we would be asking him the hard questions. So just because the two people involved here are under our own roof doesn't mean we'll handle it any differently. So, Bill, it's been a pretty tough couple of months for you, mate, and you've been through the ringer. Yes, it has, mate, and, and very difficult. Um, look, we all have our ups and downs, and um, this one, fair to say, was too close to home, and it's been really difficult, just not for me, but for kids and family and mums and dads and brothers and sisters. You know? All right. What, are your, what, are, what were your initial feelings, and what are your feelings? How did it oh. manifest itself, Bill? Uh, initial feelings, I, yeah, I just couldn't believe it. Um, I, you know, I found out, what, three or four months ago that something was going on. I had a hunch. Uh, did some investigation myself. Sat Nikki down and we had a chat and she told me. So that's how it, it happened. So my f initial feelings, Foss, were like anyone I reckon out there, you get angry and you, and you want to do something or say something and it's all, you're headless, you're angry. You know, it's just all... Well, no, yeah. And then, uh, fair to say, I went home that night, shot off a couple of um, texts to, to Gary and to Nikki, which you wouldn't want to repeat on this show, let me tell you. And, uh, and then, after a couple of days, you get embarrassed because it's bloody hard to talk about, you know, and, and we're not good... Blokes aren't good at talking about it, and I spoke, I spoke to one mate about it. Well, Bill, we spent a bit of time overseas together. Um, just as this was all happening, and I think angry is the right word. That was the bloke I was seeing at that point. Mm. Have you moved on from there? That was about a month ago. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you got it, mate. You, I took a, a deep breath, I stepped back, and now I'm just disappointed, because a good mate wouldn't do that. All right, well, let's do, just talk about that for a second, because you and Gary go back a long way. Mm. You, you started playing representative footy and cricket. You're both from the bush uh, at about 16, 15, 16, so yep. we're talking 30-plus years ago. You debuted in the same year. Yep. Your careers went sort of side by side the whole way through. Unbelievably good careers, both of you. Since you retired, you've both worked with us at the Nine Network ever since. Yep. You did breakfast radio at SEN together. You've now worked with Triple M for the last five years. Uh, you've been on family holidays together. So uh, best mates might be a stretch, but you've been pretty tight. No, we have. There's no doubt about that. Been very good mates for a long time. And, and that's what hurts you the most, you know, because there's a bit of lying going on there. Um, and there's a bit of uh, behind the back stuff, and, and that's what hurts you the most, you know, just being untruthful. And, and I've asked, you know, um, Gary and Nikki early on what was going on, and, you know, no, nothing, we're just good friends and all that. And so, and, and that's what hurts you the most, you know. Now, now, Gary, we know you're probably out there somewhere, mate, and this will be just as hard for you to probably listen to this as it is for Bill to speak about it, but you know how it goes, mate, where, you know, we must do this. We must do this uh, because we can't be seen to be hypocritical. You are satisfied, are you not, that it's only been going on because there's plenty of rumours out there, mm. Bill, and we might address some of them. We will address some of them. Are uh, you yeah, satisfied it's been going on for three months uh, and, and you found out when? Mm. Uh, yeah, three or four months ago, yep. yeah, as I said. I, you know, I had a hunch and the hunch was correct. And and as I said, looked in it a bit more and then How set Nick down. How did you have a hunch, Bill? 
I don't know. When things like this and people out there would know this... Sixth sense. Yeah, people would know. You, you get a hunch for it. There's yep. something not right. What about, just with you and Gaz, uh, how, how's that going to advance, Bill? Like, are, are you going to get to a point, do you think, where you could ever forgive him? You know, I mean, working together again, being mates again even. I mean, wh What would where, it take? Yeah, where's any of that? To get back together. Um, All uh, of us to get back together. Yeah, and, and that's the most difficult thing and the awkward thing here. Because you're good, good mates with him, you're good mates with him. You know, the cameraman and the producers and everyone here are good mates with him. So, and this show's still got to go on, even though he's been part of it for 20 years. So that's a difficult thing. And, you, and I, I said this in a production meeting the other day, we can't walk on eggshells. If you've got something hairy Gary or the stretcher... Um, actually, I wouldn't mind having a look at it myself a few times <laughs> now. But, mate, if, if, you know, if that's... It's got to come up. So we've got to... And it's, that's the difficult, awkward thing about this. Have you really spoken is. to him? Um, no. Not since three months ago. If he were if he were here tonight, would you be? Probably not. Wouldn't you? It would be bloody hard. It, I wouldn't know what to say to him. What would you say? Well, he might say something to you, Bill. Yeah, uh, yeah. So that's probably what it'll take to get back together. Yeah, right. uh, him explaining to you possibly his motives and his uh, reasons. Yeah, uh, and, and that'll take time. And, and when the time's right, we'll sit down and... Have a couple of beers and... Do you think it's over or not? Do you uh, think he's, uh, it's uh, still an ongoing relationship or not? Uh, no, I don't think it is. No. I've been told it isn't, so... Could I ask you this, Bill? If it's only been going on for three months, please, with respect, I say this, if it's been only going on three months and you're divorced and he's separated, uh, it's not that great a... Uh, travesty is it or it's well, I know you feel no, no, no. jilted but yeah. in the overall scheme of things looking at it clinically it's not that greater and I've heard this argument and let me tell you by the by law it's not it's legal to do what they're doing but morally Foss morally it's wrong on all aspects all aspects of, and mate we're brought up we know our right from wrong you know you know you're right from wrong Jim knows we've been brought up like that and it's, and it's just wrong mate and you know you don't touch a man's wallet you don't touch his wife. All right, so let me move on to the families involved. Um, I said off the top that both families are <coughs> held very dearly yeah. by us at the Nine Network. You've both been in our family at the footy show for a long, long time, well before I was involved. Um, your four beautiful children, mm. uh, Melissa, uh, yeah. Gary's ex-wife, and their three magnificent boys, the toll has been heavy. Yeah. And, and that's where, and just on Melissa, she's been the forgotten one out of this and she's actually been good to talk to because we're in the same boat, you know, and um, I can bounce things off her and she knows what I'm going through and I know what she's going through. So she's been fantastic and to Melissa, you know, keep punching and, and keep strong. And the boys, as you said, they've done it tough too. And, and then on my side, you know, um, is a, a shocking rumour which... Well, we'll uh, get to that in just a yeah, moment. Yeah, but, but the two girls have been fantastic and then I've got Oscar and, and Max... And, the, you know. How have they been, mate? <laughs> uh, been tough. On them. Um, and poor old Oski. He turned um, 16. Oh, shit, sorry. Yeah. You're right, mate. All right, just take your time. He um, turned 16 when all this was happening. And he, we couldn't have a birthday party. Couldn't, couldn't get any presents. Because you couldn't get outside, there was photographers and reporters. So, just little things like that. Bill, there's a pernicious thing out there called the social media, which is honestly disgraceful in a large percentage of life that goes on and people can say anything without any justification or recrimination. Uh, the rumours, you've heard them. Uh, I won't... Uh, I wouldn't... Wouldn't even offend you by mentioning what the rumours are, except to say this: there was a rumour. I know, I know what the answer is to this, but I want you to respond to it for uh, the public's sake. There's a rumour that Gary uh, is seeing your daughter Lucy, mm -hmm. and that's been an ongoing relationship, yep. and that has just manifested itself into uh, it just gets worse and worse. The stories and the rumours, and I want you to answer wow. that rumour. And I'm glad you asked me, because that is the worst room I've heard. That's the one that hurts the most. Lucy's a 20-year-old girl, and it's just totally incorrect. 
unfounded, not true, bullshit, and, it, and that's the one that hurts the most. And, it, and if it, whoever's peddling it out there, please stop. Because well, it's just totally unfair. She's a 20-year-old girl. She's got nothing to do with this. And Gazza and I are big enough and ugly enough to, you know, cop the flak, but not a 20-year-old girl. And in fairness, it's not fair to Gary as well. No. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, and she's been dragged through the mud on this. No, Bill, it's, it's worse than that. It, it has been a, a despicable, close to a campaign, uh, mm. a, about a magnificent 20-year-old girl who is completely innocent, yep. has become embroiled in something that she should have nothing to do with, um, and has had her very good and innocent name mm. tainted by some disgraceful people who have taken this to a place that it should never have gone to. No. It is totally and utterly factually incorrect and those people, quite frankly, should be ashamed of themselves. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, spot on. And, and as many would know out there, we've only touched on one of the rumours. They are just no, this is disgraceful. Just but you're very proud of her, Bill. No, and, and that's it, mate. She's been fantastic because it's been tough for them, for the two girls, you know. And they like to get out and about and no, they, they haven't seen this before. We've seen it and gone through a, 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 a bit, you know, and they haven't seen that. So it's been really, really tough on them. So I'm really proud of, of those Especially two down in Geelong, yeah. where it's even tighter yeah. than, you know, Melbourne's a big city with yeah. four million people, but it's a pretty closed community yeah. down there. But there's some good people. Let, having said all that, there's some gutter journos that have sent texts and emails to both girls asking, um, what do you think of your father? What do you think of your mother? Like, directly to them, which shouldn't happen, but there are some good people, I want to say that, that have been fantastic and supportive and the texts and the emails I get is just unbelievable and Blake's in the street and I went to a coffee shop the other day and a lady just hugged me, yeah? So, they're a very good support. There's some very, very good people out there. If Gary was watching, would you, what would you say to him? Would you like to say something to him? Uh, oh, oh. Um, yeah, and look... You don't have to, Bill, yeah, I just I thought you might... Uh, um, what, what I'd say is, wish, obviously, wish it didn't happen and why, why did it happen, but, you know, we have been mates for a long time. We'll sit down when the time is right, and I don't know when that time will be. We'll have a couple of beers and, and sort it out. And, and, and I know he's doing it tough, by the way, and he is, and, and, and he's in a bad place, and... You know, I think everyone here at the footy show, and me included, wish him a, a speedy recovery. Well, I don't think any of us, Sam, really quite know how bad he's doing it, Gaz, and this is the other thing. I mean, some of the speculation from people who wouldn't have a clue about mental illness and, you know, the devastating effect that can have on people and their families, speculating about the legitimacy of it is equally horrendous. Um, you know, this is a very serious condition and this is a man who is doing an extraordinarily tough. And it's been ongoing for at least 18 months, uh, yep. not three months, and uh, the chicken didn't come before the egg in this case. Right. And uh, as a friend of Gary's, we wish him well. I've uh, spoken to him briefly once since it happened, but he is in a very dark place. And uh, that's the other side of this, but... Um, we do wish him well, Bill. I know in your heart you wish him well, and I feel sure, I actually feel sure that um, this will repair itself. Uh, time will be the great healer, mm. and uh, we will all be back together again. Um, I know it's been tough for you, and it'd be tough for him watching, so I don't know what else we could possibly say to you. We'll get criticised for uh, speaking about it. We'll get criticised, because this will probably make Gary feel worse. But if we don't address it, people are open to come and ask you and you can say, no, mate, I've answered all the questions. There's nothing more to say about it, I suppose. That's the reason mainly we're doing it. Well, Bill, the other thing that you've had to deal with in the last week is the loss of one of your great mates from your footy career, uh, one of the greats of your footy club, Paul Couch. Yeah, and it puts it in perspective, doesn't it? Like, I'm sitting here and there's no more Paul Couch. You know, he died last Sunday and he was 51, went for a bike ride and he didn't come home. And he's one of the great blokes of all time. And to Geraldine and the kids, I don't know if they're watching, but I just, I was just so sad because he was a ripper. He was a great dad and a great uh, husband and, and we loved him. And just puts things in perspective, Jim. Really All right. does. Well, Bill, you've, um, you've been through a very tough time and we really appreciate you coming on and speaking so candidly about it tonight. Um, I, I echo uh, Sam's sentiments. I know Gaz will be watching and I know how tough he's doing and I too have spoken to him. Um, he is a great part of what we're about and we wish him well and his uh, battle to get back to where he was. Uh, we're going to take a break. Good. There's lots more of the footy show to come, so stay with us.
Tonight on the Footy Show, an outrageous take on a jam-packed off-season. Giddy up! Old Foss gets a 70th birthday present he won't forget. We launch the AFL's most ferocious new competition, and it's barking mad. Woof! All hell breaks loose when Grandpa Sam babysits the kids. What could go wrong? And Damo hits us between the eyes with a fresh batch of news. Hold on to your glasses, Purple. That's tonight on The Footy Show. full footy show mode now as uh, we need to get the panel involved in what's going to be a magnificent first up show and what about this for a couple of panellists first of all a man who ticked off his fourth premiership for the Hawks put your hands together for Jared Roughhead yeah. who's on the footy show tonight and joining him the brand new captain of the Essendon Football Club the superstar Brendan Goddard Thank you, Vimla. Nice to have you, bud. Um, now, I'm going to get to both of you in just a moment, but Fat, what are you doing here? You're meant to be over there. Yes, I know, but uh, chemistry, Jim. You and I have chemistry. Right. So that is why I'm here, my really? friend. Really? That's yes, it. Chemistry. So what's happening over there? Well, there's a little hole there. Who hey, should Jim, we get on? Come on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Why, Jim? Uh, Why I'm was ready it to Gary? Roll. Why was it Gary? Why yep. couldn't it have been him? Uh, <laughs> oh, no. Hey? No. How long did it take for you to put that jumper together, please? You like that? I'm right behind you, Jim. Are you? Even though most aren't. Yes. I am right behind you. you. I think you are going to be excellent. Uh, listen to this. So far, doing a wonderful job. Hey. Uh, Ruff, Yo. we need to congratulate you, yes. everybody involved in this, of course, because in the off-season got married. Yes. Ruff, to the far too yeah. beautiful Sarah. Yeah. Uh, there it is, there. Oh. Ruff and Sarah. Look at that. That's just... I tell you what, Sir Donald Bradman here, Jim. Yes. Batting way wow. above his average. Nuts. So have a look at that. New material yeah, already, boys. Yes. <laughs> Uh, magnificent Great. wedding. There's all these good friends, Jim. Oh, all these friends. There's Rick Latson, Chance That's Bateman, Hodgie, yep. uh, Burgoyne. There's Campbell Brown there. Yep. Uh, well, Josh you... Thurgood, Simon Crawshay, <laughs> and guess who's not there? Bill, as you say, it's not only the current players. Yeah. There are past players past. in... Like, I'm pretty sure Ali DeWald's in there Ali... somewhere. <laughs> Paul no, Deere. Exactly. The only person who wasn't invited... Is... Shane Crawford! <laughs> Crawford! I don't want to talk about it. What happened? I really, I don't want to talk about it. He had 500 on the list. Yes. I didn't get in the top 500. Uh, 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 hey, wait, wait, hang on. No. I only see you here. When man. you were drafted, I was there. When you <laughs> couldn't kick straight, I said, just believe in yourself, Ruff. Just guide it down. You started kicking straight. When you had your first kiss, I was there. Yeah. When you got to third base, I wasn't oh! there. I wasn't there. <laughs> no. We've drifted. But, well, mate, the only time I see you is here. So, you, like, you left in 08 and you just, you ditched it. Premiership teammate. Uh, this is harsh. Yes. Could I, could really I harsh. ask you something? Yes. Are you are you telling me? Oops. Yep. There's a reason I'm asking this. Yes. That he wasn't at the no, wedding. Not invited. Why, why I, are you I was asked to mind his bloody kids while he went to the <laughs> Jack and Harry. Uh, yeah, we've. That was a little prank that we played on you. <laughs> Which yeah. is for the show later on, so um, I don't know if you want well, to explain what, what happened. what we've got is a but little sneak peek of what happened. A because teaser. Shane basically told Sam that he was going to Jared Roughhead's wedding and therefore he needed a babysitter. The babysitter fell over at the last minute. So Shane got Sam... I said I was going to be half an hour too and I took me about in. three and a half hours. We're going to show you all of this later, but here's a little teaser. Now here we go, boys. Here are the rules. We're going to... Harry, Jack, Jack, come here. Uh, 
Which one's Harry? Hi, Harry. <laughs> right. Don't. Don't go upstairs. You're not upstairs, are you? Ah! Holy mackerel. Jack put his foot on the accelerator. <laughs> go. Hello, I'm Bert. Listen, how long will you be? You said it'd be an hour. It's been two hours. Get here quickly, Shane. Shane, don't touch that. I'll give you a lolly if you put it down. I'll give you a lolly. Oh. Oh, That, more of that to come, of course, yeah. a little later yeah. on. Force, you had no idea cameras were there. You just thought you were doing an old mate a favour. <laughs> I, I did, Jim. I was summoned. Uh, uh, my uh, trusty man yes. over there, Rob, said, could you uh, spare the day? He's yeah. off to a wedding. <laughs> over I go. And had to put up with that. How anyone puts up with that? They both in introduced themselves as Jack. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I thought he might be stupid enough to call both his boys <laughs> uh, I had no idea who I was talking to at any stage. The most disobedient bunch of two people I've ever been with really? in my life. Well, that's, well, yes. well, that's it, Dad. What did you expect? That's right. Yeah. I'd, I'd like... We should have uh, the national IQ test between those three of them up here. Yeah. Yeah. Nice to see if he could pick a winner. Which one would win? Hey? Jack or Harry? Or you. Well, uh, no, I'm not Very sure. Very unlikely. But Brendan Goddard's with us, yes, everybody. Plenty happening at the Essendon Footy Club, including congratulations on being announced as the new captain of the club. You must be very proud yeah, of that. Yeah, thank you. Now, how did you react to the news that so many of your teammates were not going to be a part of the season? Well, uh, probably a bit like Bill, really. I was at, at, at the beginning, I was, it was almost disbelief, to be honest. Um, being in the position at the footy club, we weren't there with them, but it was, it was almost disbelief that it's all come to this. And then after that, there was anger. There was, you know, there still is a bit of anger, but uh, initially it was just disbelief. And my mail is you went and sat in your car for a while just to gather yourself, is that right? Uh, yeah, I did. I just felt like I needed to clear my head or try and find some chain of thought. So uh, all of us, all the 12 guys weren't there, but the rest of us were all at the footy club, so I just needed some time out and went and sat and thought about it. And then gathered myself and went back in and there was a short briefing and, and whatnot and then uh, we moved on for the rest of the day to meet up with the other guys. And there's rumours of players wanting out. The rumours, we all know how bad they can be. Um, would you be disappointed if some players did leave? Uh, of course I'd be disappointed because they're all quality people. You know, they're quality footballers but they're quality people and they're, and they're good friends. So, yeah, I'd be disappointed but at, at the end of the day it's their decision. So. Whatever that is, we'll support them, but at the same time, we, we all want them back. We want all, every one of them back. I see even Dennis Cometti, who really wanders into this territory during the week, suggested that you don't deserve to be on Anzac Day. Yeah, thanks for that, Dennis. Uh, two bobs. It's, uh, I think that got a bit of air time for about a day, so thankfully it didn't get much air. But uh, that's his opinion, that's fine. But uh, uh, everyone's got their own opinion. All right, Shane, we've got the uh, list changes for the Bombers, of which there are a few. There's plenty. Uh, we're going to have a look right here. Uh, some players that have come in. We've got Craig Burke from Sydney, Lewenberger, Darcy Parrish, he was pick number five. He can play, keep an eye on him. Uh, Francis Morgan, Redmond, Brown, who will play a lot throughout the year. Former Geelong Cat star. Well, he was going all right. Uh, Hartley and Eads is there. So a few outs. Uh, Mel uh, Melksham's gone. He's gone off to Melbourne. Carlo, obviously gone to St Kilda. And two of the all-time greats, Paul Chapman has retired and Dustin Fletcher, after 400 games, has moved on. So, it's a big turnaround, isn't it? Uh, 18, I just counted, so uh, I think uh, it's a first in maybe the history of the AFL to have 18 list changes in, in one off-season. So, uh, it's quite significant. But, yeah. Brendan, here's the good news. Every cloud has a silver lining. And it has just been ratified, I think, that Essendon have now been allowed to have a new top-up player. And... Um, a new one. Yeah, a new one. Um, no, oh, no. Oh, come on, Force. Maria. Yeah, that's, that's, she <laughs> is <laughs> oh, come on, apparently come on. allowed to be I'll, just I'll on, on, have her on, my on standby, <laughs> uh, just in case she could shout the opposition into defeat. <laughs> uh, uh, now, could I just Front. get back to Dennis Cometti? Yes. Uh, I haven't caught up with that. Did he say Essendon shouldn't be 
playing on Anzac worthy Day. Worthy to play on Anzac Day, I think, is and, the and tenor of what he was a, saying. A, a, this is an obvious question. Let me ask it. And what was his reason? Oh, because of no the... one on the ground will have been uh, involved in this, the saga, will they? I, no. no. Well, what is that? That is just gratuitous nonsense. Yeah, I, no, I, seriously. I, I, <laughs> that is... Exactly right. I think it was on the back of the performance on the weekend, but I don't want to speak for Dennis. I, I just saw the quote and... Oh, oh, oh so, so I'll, I'll, Dennis, if I've... I, so he's not saying because of the drug no, thing. No, he's saying because they won't be competitive. Won't be competitive, I think, was what Well, was. I'll take some of that back, Dennis. <laughs> uh, no, that's, uh, that's, that is mm. actually a fair point. Um, BJ. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, Jeez, it's first. 180 degrees. Very first, see ya. <laughs> Beep. I, I can understand him saying it because no, he's a good man, but oh. I was about to... No, mate, I can understand him saying it because... Based it, on our performance from the weekend. So yeah. he's saying we don't deserve to play Anzac Day even though Kevin Sheedy was in no, there behind I, Anzac Day. I, 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 uh, so I'm, we lost I'm, the right Brendan, I, I'm Day. with you. I'm just he's trying to... Sure understand. About I'm trying to understand that if, if it goes on and Essendon aren't competitive, it'll be a bit of a farce. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying. I, there's no reason other than that why you shouldn't be there. They won their first game... Uh, this year in the NAB Cup. We haven't played any games yet, Shane. And then well, we played NAB Cup. We've played NAB no Cup. games whatsoever. Speaking yes. of quotes, Brendan. Sorry, Bill. Yes. yes. Uh, there was an article about yourself, your on-field demeanour. Um, I know the areas I need to improve, but the media or other people will paint a picture where, whichever way they want. <laughs> yeah, paint a picture well, of you. Well, 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 yep. So yeah. we got the Grade 1 kids Ooh. from Epping East Primary School. They, to might, they might teach you to read, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you do the reading from now. Uh, to paint a picture of you, BJ. So have a look, these. This is genuine. There's one there. Oh, no. Crying, and yes, with your little feathers. A couple of little no, feathers there. Like drawing, Bill. No, no. And no, then there's no. another one here. Uh, oh, cranky. There. Not happy. And then this one we like. Because you're throwing Chappie's book in the fire. Look at that. A bit more hair there. And just a bit more hair. Red hair. So that is the great one. Thank you to the kids there at Amping East. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, yeah. kids. Now, uh, speaking <laughs> of fans, uh, Sil Rioli, um, we all love him. Everyone gets really excited. Bruce McAvaney loves him more than anyone. Well, Norm we thought Smith that. Medalist. Yeah, absolute mm -hmm. superstar. Have a look at the reaction. Uh, young Sean, Sean, he popped into a school Sean, and yeah. he made a surprise visit to hand over the membership for 2016. And you watch his reaction. Oh, this is beautiful. He just loses it in front of the class. <laughs> What a beautiful moment. Good on you, Sean, being a Hawthorne supporter. Okay, well done to Cyril for popping think? down there. Right? Hey, I yeah. think we'd all lose it if Cyril popped down. Oh, thanks, Big hug. Well done, Sean. Good on you, Cyril. Nice Isn't that fantastic? Yeah. Um, well done, Cyril. Yeah, that is, yeah, that is a, a great thing. Uh, very uh, strong community club, Rough. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. We should do that and send Sam well, somewhere. Well, interestingly enough, we have dug up and we had to go a fair way back. An old uh, school photo of Sam when he was in primary oh, school. No. <laughs> there he is. At the grammar. Who was your hero back in the day? For us? As an age who was, my who hero? was your hero uh, back uh, in those uh, days? I was nine then. Yes. Um, High pants. That's at the grammar. Well, I, the I, I uh, took a penchant for Gladys Moncrief. I don't know if you know who <laughs> no. she was. She was a great opera singer of right. the day. Uh, yes. <laughs> no one's ever heard of her. Uh, there was an. Uh, 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 you'll laugh at this, but uh, my mother took me to see the Queen when she drove in a motorcade down uh, Glenfree Road in 1954. That's it there. And I was nine, I had my school cap on, and I said to my mother as the Queen looked out over the crowd, this is Fanning, my late mother, I uh, said to my mother, she looked right at me, and oh. my mother broke down and cried. Oh, she boy. thought that the Queen had looked at her son. So it was me. You're telling me at yeah. nine years of age, <laughs> you. your two heroes were Gladys Moncrief and, and the Queen. queen. <laughs> well, Polly Farmer and, or someone. Yeah, Polly Farmer, I'm as old as him, how could he be a hero? <laughs> Yeah, incidentally, uh, I'm not as old as him. Uh, yeah. It's Polly Farmer's birthday today. He's 81 uh, years of age. So, to so the best footballer ever. To so the best footballer ever, Polly. Happy birthday. Uh, I was talking about the best footballer. What about the best team mm. for the last three years? Can they win four in a row? It's the mighty Hawks, of course. And here they are. Here they are. There's some ins there. In comes Jack Fitzpatrick and then some young boys there. Some outs. Jed Anderson will be missed. So will Matthew Suckling, who's been very good. And David Hale and Brian Lake have retired. So there's a hole, there's a hole in the defence there, of course. Uh, very good depth. Of course, the big question is, how is your knee, Jared? 
Uh, it's good. Four weeks post-surgery and uh, doing some rehab now, but still a little bit away, which, which will take its time. So when will you be back? Uh, I'm not too sure on an exact date, but it'll be in the middle of the year sometime, so Ooh, the boy's going to have to go without. It's a big loss, isn't it? That? That's a big it loss. It's a big loss. You had reconstructive surgery, but not of the worst type. Explain No, that no, again. PCL, so it um, stops the knee going back and forward, and it's similar to an ACL uh, Rico where they take a, a hamstring graft and, and fiddle around in there, so uh, there's been a bit of uh, work done. And when did you have it done? Four weeks ago. And I, I know I know it's another silly question, mm -hmm. but why didn't... Did you just injure it four weeks ago? No, so I, I did it. I had a bit of trouble with it last year, but why didn't you um, have it done at the end of the well, year? That's, that's, a, that's you know a question that some are going to ask, but I had no I, I'm asking no that. trouble or no pain at the end of the season, or um, you know I went away with BJ and we played it overseas in the international rules and no problem, no then? problem over there. And so when I got back after Christmas, mm -hmm. uh, there was a bit of an issue, and uh, you know we could have gone in and just fixed it up and would have been only out for a little bit, but there's a chance it could come back, so we thought, uh, just get it done and move on. I heard at the wedding you had a few too much to drink and fell over a bush, yeah. and uh, yeah. that's where it all Because you weren't jealous, there, jealous, so you wouldn't jealous, know. Jealous, well, that's jealous what again. I heard. Hey, um, Bill. <laughs> yes, Jim. Speaking of events of the last oh, year, yes, I, I want you to correct <laughs> me if mm -hmm. anything I say in the next sentence or two is incorrect, and Shane, you can jump in on this as well. We went uh, at the end of December to Sam's 70th birthday. And it, 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 was, it was a gala occasion held in Port Melbourne. Uh, we all turned up and it was the who's who of, uh, of Melbourne, of course. Uh, the great Bert Newton uh, was there, Molly Meldrum, all the legends. Anyway, we turned up, we all sat down. It was a gathering of about 100. Sam got up and said, this was exactly yeah. what he said when he got up. He Nothing said, wrong. correct me if I'm wrong. No, no, you haven't. you've been he, good. He looked down the barrel and said, this night is not about me. That's right. It's, I said it, that. It, shut up. He said, you won't hear from me. It, it, there won't be uh, any speeches, really. Um, it's not about me. It's, uh, because the night's not about me and I don't want you sitting there bored while one person after another gets <laughs> up and speaks. That's it's, correct. It's, that's how he set it up. Spot on. So then... Sam spoke on mm -hmm. eight different occasions himself. <laughs> he, then, he, he then played a, mm. a drum break from a jazz drummer from the 50s that went for nine minutes. Buddy, yeah. Buddy Rich. Buddy Rich. Buddy he Rich. he, he then true. played a speech from Richard Burton that went for 15 minutes. That's true. Eddie got up and spoke beautifully on behalf of everyone in the audience, and that was uh, appropriate and fantastic. And about him. And about Sam, though, yes. exactly. Yeah. No, he not did about not him. He spoke a lot about Sam. Mm. Then, That's true. Tom Berlinson yep. live mm. sung about and to Sam for mm. 25 yes. minutes. Serenaded him. Oh. At the end of which, mm. Sam got up and sung about himself. Yes. <laughs> Fox, that, that is true. true. That is very, very true. Now, of course, 100%. And the best thing about it, you took someone that was younger than you to the party. Your face. <laughs> <laughs> it's, that's not bad. That, 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 is, that is a tissue of lies. No, no, no it's not. Not, not that, true. These, we're that, all there. I, I, you I did you sing at the end? Did you get up and no. perform? No. Yeah. I, oh, oh, I, oh, I, I've got it on my phone. You, and you mind it. And you mind it. I didn't sing. <laughs> I compared the nights so... You emceed so your own function. It's yes. because... It's I, not about me, but I'm just going to say a few yeah, words. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I compared... I said a few words to tell you what the program was. Buddy, Buddy Rich was universally Rich. at that thing acclaimed with that drum Rosie. solo. Yep. Bert Newton, Molly Meldrum, yep. a cavalcade... Eddie Shane came Crawford. up and said, that is the best thing we've no ever seen. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> then I introduced... Uh, the meal was coming on. Yeah. Someone got up. Got Mark up again. Newman, my, my son. Son, stepson, yes. he got up and told speedos. us about the wines. That's it. Jim, I noticed you quaffed back I two $20,000 <laughs> bottles of Chardonnay <laughs> from the <laughs> Reims district in France. That's you got exactly up eight, right. times. eight times. I got up to eight times. keep the evening going. I didn't oh, speak. And Eddie oh, got up shitless. and it was yep. fantastic. And then Richard Burton's speech about... And Tom Burlinson mm, uh, yeah. sang yeah. fan... Yeah, yeah, he was good. Well, well, and all on. the time, while the speeches weren't happening, which was about a minute and a half, yeah. there was vision up on this big screen of chickens being slaughtered. Yes. <laughs> what was that? Yeah, that, was, that, was a, that was, in hindsight, probably, that was a, that was a, a, a DVD called Samsara, where oh. it shows a whole lot of different, no words vision. to it, it's just music with vision. And I did look up and saw a whole lot of chickens having their ass plucked out of them. <laughs> and I thought, that'll go over well if people are watching that in the middle of uh, the... Uh, oh. 
Yeah, wings and that's the no, no, can, can you please explain? Because you said that Bill and myself, can you come along and interview some at the yes. start so I can use that package? Yeah. And if you want, you can stay for a drink. Yes. So you, you didn't even invite us, yet no. we had to try and weave our way I onto said, a table. I said, if you had other things to do, uh, I said, I'll pay you to come along. <laughs> Uh, did I not? You um, haven't paid me a thing. I, oh, you, you absolute liar. You liar. I offered, <laughs> I offered you money and you, you did, generously... did, and then you put it back in your pocket. Yeah, because so you, you pocket said, I don't want it. it, this is... No, I took it. tight ass. I know, you <laughs> took <laughs> it. Yeah. All right, what we have done, <laughs> because <laughs> our great friend has <laughs> turned 70, mm. uh, we have decided to give him a little present. I think oh, you're going to yeah. enjoy this, both here in the audience... <laughs> ..and also at home. Yes. Because what happens with Sam over his considerable off-season, which is about six and a half months, <laughs> is he observes society and gets nice and wound up. Mm. So what we've decided to do is give him 70 seconds oh, no. at a lectern no. to stand up and rant about whatever he wants uninterrupted. I'm very nervous about this, Bill. Yes. I don't... Uninterrupted? You are. You should see oh, the blokes you... upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> so... I haven't prepared anything. No, well, we're going to give you the break. No, to I've prepare. got a hundred things I can oh, do no. off the top of my head. Have you? Yeah. Righto, sit down. Sit down. <laughs> we're going to take a break on the footy show. Sam Lecturn, oh, 70 yes. second rant, coming up next. Come on, Paul. Stop. <laughs> Lots of great stuff, as I said off the top, coming up tonight, including a brand new segment where the members of the audience get to ask Sam any question they've ever wanted to ask. That's coming up later in the oh, show. Gee. Sam won't gee have seen was... the questions. We are uh, on a tight rope tonight, Willis, it's yes. uh, fair to say, because we don't know what's going to happen there. We don't know what's going to happen now. If you're just joining us, Sam turned 70 last year as a gift to him to get everything that he's been stewing on all summer off his chest. We have given him 70 seconds worth of a rant at a lectern to get it all out of his system. So, force up your hop. Well done. Now, before... I don't want you to interrupt me. No, I don't no. want to get half a... No, no. You, won't, you won't be so interrupted. I'm doing this off the top of you my head. No, I know. Uh, before <laughs> we go on, uh, the panel, Ruff, uh, BJ and Shane, you unfortunately have to pay attention because we want a score from you. Oh, right, at OK. The end. Does You've... he win a prize? Uh, no, sorry. just a score. So, on. afterwards, we'll get to you. <laughs> Uh, now I need to read, and this is serious, so I'm going to straighten up a legal disclaimer. Oh. The views and opinions about to be expressed by Sam Newman do in no way represent the management of this station, its stakeholders, his co-stars on this show, or anyone born after 1954. Yes. So, Bill, you've got the air horn, I've got the 70-second time clock. Hit it, let's go. Good luck, boss. If Leonardo DiCaprio can rabbit on about climate change at the Academy Awards when the industry he's involved in decimates every location they ever go to and then he flies in his private jet back to his 20-roomed, 10-bathroomed, multi-car garaged, swimming pooled air-conditioned mansion on the Academy Awards or Stan Grant can prattle on about the jaundiced world he lives in on Australia Day then let me join the conversation. A man called Chris Gale, since we were here last... Oh, no. A man called Chris Gale has slapped, been slapped around by the righteous and pious media because he told a person, a woman, that he thought she was attractive. Is there anyone seriously telling me that... A man, woman or beast wouldn't be secretly delighted that someone publicly said that they were appealing. Time. <laughs> and then there was Mitchell Pearce, who was the victim, who was... Don't, if you ring that bell... Uh -huh. Who you. was the victim <laughs> of a... Who was the victim of a um, opportunistic parasite who took a photo of Mitchell pretending to buff a dog... <laughs> At a private function. Uh, incidentally, I had a photo uh, here that I was going to show you. I was going to show you later in the show, to be honest. 
It was a bogus photo of me pretending to yeah, do yeah. something. Right. But the management wouldn't let me show it. Uh, oh. Because they, and of course, oh, as for, I'm their humble servant, uh, for I have very good reasons. Say, yeah. uh, Two minutes. And what? <laughs> I haven't even got on to Dustin Martin, right. who yeah. threatened to murder someone with some chopsticks Come in a restaurant. Yes, the restaurant. world's gone yeah. mad. I mean, what are. are people complaining about? Yeah. That's a 70 second rant that went two minutes and oh, ten seconds. We, uh, well, sit down. Shorten them up. That's it. Righto. Uh, scores, please. Ruffage, how did you see uh, it? Yeah. I saw it all right. Oh, no. saw... And we've given you a score. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> well, now, the audience built yes. can get involved in Thank this. You. If you wish to vote, oh, whether no. you agree with Sam or not, uh, Facebook, it's AFL Footy nice. Show, you can see it there. We'll give you a bit of a look later on. Tell me what's wrong, wrong with showing that photo. No, no. It, it's doing a doing bogus that. photo. No, you won't uh, be doing it was it pretending to be taken. Yeah, no, you so won't, won't be there doing it. There it is, AFL so Footy Show. And what you thought of Sam's rant. All right. Yeah, so get stuck into that. Now, not the first time we've seen Brendan Goddard this year because a little while back we got some of the biggest stars of the AFL to go to a secret location. Oh, because we had a thing called Best in AFL Footy Show. <laughs> what that is, is these AFL stars and their dogs were put through their paces. Uh, some of the biggest names, as I said, some extraordinarily disobedient dogs. We're going to be showing that in the coming weeks, but here's just a little sneak peek. The definition of Best in Show is an event that encapsulates a canine's decorum, class and obedience. The Footy Show's Best in Show was nothing like this. He's got him in there! BJ, he's pounding into his former teammate. It's poor versus poor, and who's going to take home the bone line? Brendan Goddard and Lexi, Dane Swan with Barney, the Kabooters. I've won a Brownlow, so now it's my boy's turn. David Armitage and the very, very cool Ari. Oh, look at that. Chris Dawes and Bob. Don't let his small stature fool you. He means business. Kind of. Oh, nice start. Such a low hurdle for a big dog. Here we go. Oh! This dog's told its owner to get stuffed. Tom Rockcliffe and Killer. Killer was a bit flat. He felt a bit violated by Sammy out there when he pulled the glove out. <laughs> this is uh, for the dog's protection. Uh, you never know where my hands have been. What are we feeling for here, Foss? Oh, no. Oh, this is awkward. Yeah, that's big. It has no testicles. No, it has no testicles. <laughs> what, why would that be? It's female. It's de-sexed. It's a female. No, 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 it's not. <laughs> <laughs> How did you end up with Judge? You can't even tell the sex of the bloody thing. Well, it's got no balls, Jim. Nicely oh, oh, oh. done. It's been a stumbling block for all dogs. Well done. <laughs> sit. Stay there. Stay. Oh, this is good. Ari and Lex both don't like cool. She's happy with that, sir. No, 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 don't be. Showing no obedience at all. Well, they're all three good too. Josh Gibson and Zeus. It's a firm. It's obviously done exercise. Yeah, I thought it was a team event. Point of view. Time was good. She just didn't do anything. <laughs> oh no! Now it's happened to William and Corpus. Steph, in all of your time of judging dog shows, have you ever seen this happen? No, before? never. No score. No score. Rockcliffe flew down from <laughs> Brisbane with his Daxon. Killer. <laughs> Killer. We had international uh, dog judges. We did. International dog judges. So next week, the first best in show, you get a best in footy show you're going to see. Thanks to Home Timber and Hardware Go, where the tradies go, who are magnificent <laughs> sponsors of this world-class event. They were indeed. Proud sponsors. Go where the tradies go. BJ, you were there with Lex, your dog, fair to say... You both weren't happy with Croft, who was dressed up in a... D what? Chubby dog shoes. Oh, yeah, chubby shoes. Yeah. Yeah. 
Fair to say, weren't you, BJ? You weren't happy. What's that? Not happy about it. Well, there's a the footage of it. She just didn't like smart people who were under four foot. That's right. That's no, trick. She's not used to it. That's harsh. It's cruel. Look at him. That is, this is not fair. That's hers, it, Bill. That's Lex. And look at it. Look at that little person run across the screen. We were hoping you'd let it off the leak. She was actually... I wasn't happy with him, so just use his prop. Yeah. <laughs> oh. You actually... Oh. Beach. Once again, you're blaming other people, Brendan. To be fully <laughs> honest... <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Beach, to be properly honest, you actually filthied up. You did. At the fact that Shane cost your dog. Sabotage the competition. Very competitive. So, who, who was I working for? No one. Josh. No, Josh. Right, maybe Josh. Well, Why didn't you let it off the leash and it would, might have yeah, ripped that, his throat that, that out? That did cross my mind at some stage. One of those dogs had balls like yours. Oh, no. <laughs> so, I, so I think we should go for a break. We will have part one <laughs> of Best in Footy Show coming up and it is absolutely <laughs> sensational, so stick around for that. Which dog? Uh, as we go, shut up, <laughs> Josh as we go to a break. Dog. Well, in fact, straight after the yes. break. The next thing you'll oh, see okay. is a unique take, including a very, very clever man with pen. Uh, Fifey, I'm talking <laughs> about, boy, yes. and his unique take on the off-season. That's next. Stay with us. <laughs> <laughs> the Footy Show Stakes, not brought to you by Gatorade. Just about ready to jump here for the Footy Show Stakes. Racing, Eddie Maguire is first to jump on rank outside. I named that big new stadium after me, yeah. Next is James Hurd on Unapologetic. Then Bomber Thompson on Scapegoat. And Joe Watson on Brownlow was holding on for dear life. Moving through the field is Dustin Martin on Turning Japanese. Followed closely by Warney on I Hate Steve Walker's He's a Brick. And trailing the pack is Dane Swan and Travis Cloak on Dick Pick. Here is still stuck at the gates. He's going nowhere today, folks. With 200 to go, James Hurd on unapologetic gets to the front as he grabs Bomber Thompson and throws him under a bus. Joe Watson has still lost his grip on Brownlow, and it looks like Dustin Martin has already gone for the chopstick on turning Japanese. Dane Swan and Travis Cloak on deck pick are now making their move as they hit the front with 50 metres to go. But out of nowhere, here comes Mitchell Pierce on Whopper. It's Mitchell Pierce on Whopper. It's Dick Pick. It's Whopper. Ten from the post. Jeremy Howe throws Whopper at Brisby. And Dick Pick wins in a photo finish. Very well done. <laughs> Bye. Obviously, our creative team, who always do a fantastic job, but we and also need to acknowledge Andrew Fife. Yes, who does what a superb star. Very well good. Round of applause. Well done, Fife. For Fifey, who is the best and has been forever. But serious matter coming out of that that I want to address with all three of you, but certainly the two on the end. The Brownlow medal and Joe Watson. Lots of talk about whether he should hang on to it. Um, even talk about the commission saying, well, you should volunteer to uh, hand it over. What are your thoughts, BJ? Oh, look, I don't, I don't think that's really appropriate for him to go in there and beg in front of the commission because I'm pretty sure he's just not going to hand it over on a platter. But I th I'm pretty sure they've probably already made their mind up, to be honest, even though it kind of got stalled from their meeting uh, a month ago. So what or do you so mean ago. by that? Do you think it's going to happen? Oh, whether one way or another, I'm not okay. sure what it is, but I think, I think they know what they're going to do. It'd make so it easier if he handed it back than them ask for it. Um, yeah, yeah well, a, it would. Well, it's a hard one to hand back when early on he was probably told... You're going to be okay. Mm. And, and for a guy, for a guy all that, of a sudden he's told, oh, hang on, you're not sure. How yeah, about and for a guy that actually, and I know, but pleads he's innocent and believes he's yeah. done nothing wrong. It's, exactly. How about yeah, when not, they find him guilty of there. something? When they actually find him guilty of something, then he can hand it back. Yeah. And until then... Yeah. 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 In fact, in fact you can, you, it's fair to say, Sam, that the AFL and Asada didn't find him guilty of anything. It was what uh, at the end of the day but what have they found him guilty of well exactly they've found him guilty of nothing yeah, as correct. they have with essendon nothing it yeah. should have been knocked on the head uh, by the afl straight away and said yes or no and not drag it out i feel so sorry for him you know having to deal with it especially while he's not playing footy at the moment all right the other question we need to ask you bj while we've got you in the crosshairs is paul chapman uh, former grader the cats and then finished his career at essendon has um, had some Less than charitable things to say about yourself. I think he was quoted in the book as saying, this is in his book, of course, Chappie, uh, quoted as saying, you wouldn't have lasted a minute at Geelong. How does any of this sit with you? Uh, well, again, that's his opinion, but um, I said it before, everyone knows within the four walls at Essendon, the real Paul Chapman, so I'm not going to give it too much oxygen. It did happen quite some time ago, so we'll just leave it at that. 
Uh, and another one. Mm -hmm. um, your beautiful partner, Rose, is due any so day now. Good, yeah. You're going to be a dad. So, shout out to yeah. lovely Rosie seeing you home tonight. Uh, heavily 37 and a half weeks pregnant, so you got your life's, phone ready to life's go, about to get serious. So, you reckon you're, crank, you're cranky now? You wait for a couple of weeks, mate. <laughs> oh. If you know it happens what, yeah. now, will you let us take the cameras and we'll do it oh, live shame. for the shot? No, we won't, okay? Shame. No, do you know what you're having, uh, no, Brendan? Okay. No. Because if it's a girl, she would want to look a lot like her mother. Yes. Oh, I said that. That's all right. <laughs> I'm fine with that. Yeah, it's she, my athleticism. If it's a girl, she'll be bald by the time she's 30. <laughs> <laughs> if, um, you are talking about my future child, Sam. Yeah. No, I'm talking about your hairline <laughs> <laughs> rushing back at a rate of knots. What about round one? If she was due round one, would you play? Uh, she's due round two. All right. Saturday. Would you play? You're going to play no. or you go to the birth? You, you no, I'll not, go to you're the not birth. going to play. I'll go to the birth, Sam. Mm. So we should. Well, good on you. Yes. Awesome. That's how the world's changed. Oh. The world's changed. Did you go to any of your births? <laughs> Did you go to any? He doesn't know how many kids he's got. <laughs> <laughs> Is that true? No, I, 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 I didn't go to them because yeah. I... Quite frankly, didn't want to see but the whole ugly. Uh, oh no! Oh. 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 That is not. I true. didn't want to see the whole ugly <laughs> that catastrophe is not in front the of truth. me. No, to be that beautiful, is not true. No, I'm. You're saying that for Stand out in the waiting effect. room, and I'll just wait till I hear the scream. Third slip. Then I no. go in and smack the mother. I don't, Bill. What are, what are we? <laughs> no, no. Oh, Stevie J, another man that had his battles with Chappie, is Stevie J. Yes. <laughs> who, let me tell you, is loving it up there in Sydney. And here he is. Look at Stephen. Oh, he turned it on. He's a star, this man. Have a look at this goal here. Overlish didn't look at the goals. He knows where the goals are. He's going to be a very, very good player for the Giants, of course. And he's loving it up there. And, of course, uh, he can do this, too. <laughs> he can do the good and the bad and the ugly. He can still do it old Stevie. Stevie getting married, of course. He is getting married. And yourself, your involvement, because you've been badgering him about as we watch Stevie just not quite get missed that. Uh, uh, the, the groomsman, Bill? Well, he's getting married. We got an invitation the other day. Ooh. And any further involvement in the affair? Well, it was save the date invitation. So was I it? Haven't, I haven't been asked yet, oh. Jim, but you would have thought. And you would have thought. And how ticked off would Stevie be that he decided to go to the Greater West Sydney a week after they announced that Essendon were mm. banning 36 players, he could have just slipped up to Essendon and played. Hey, I don't That's think he got... He, he went on his own fruition. Mm. I think he was... Yeah, up. On his own what? Yes. Uh, his own <laughs> bat. Now, let's have a look at the Giants here. He said, he said his own fruition, he said. <laughs> He's a giant. That'd be volition. Uh, volition. In the Stevie J. Big Dawson Simpson. Good luck to Dawson up there. Jake and Hopper will be a very good player. There's some outs there. They'll certainly miss Trelaw. They'll miss Bug. They'll miss Townsend. And they'll miss Lockie Plowman who's a very, very good player. 11 wins for the Giants last year, and they had a great win on the weekend against Sydney, a 34-point win there. Cam McCarthy is the one who kicked 35 goals, of yep. course, for them last year, and he is on indefinite leave, and he will be missed up there, but uh, still a very good side. And I've got an insider up there, and he can't believe how well they train, the talent up there, and how well... The ball just hums around at training, he Who said. would that be, Bill? Oh, I've got an insight. I don't worry. Yeah, mm. right hey, uh, speaking of gentlemen who we've missed over the summer, but he's back and better than ever, of course, is the number one newsbreaker in football. Make him welcome. Damien Barrett's oh. on the footy show. Thank you, Jim. Damien, nice to see you. We'll start with uh, Charlie Dixon yeah. tonight, Jim, the, uh, the new Port Adelaide player. His behavioural concerns have moved with him to that new club in Port Adelaide, with uh, the club itself being forced to counsel him for partying in the off-season. He was hauled by hall before senior officials and grilled about a get-together he had with former Gold Coast Suns teammates in the Gold Coast in January. An interesting attendee at that gathering was Harley Bennell, who, like Dixon, was also forced to uh, leave the Suns for off-field reasons last year. Port football manager Chris Davies wouldn't comment on the nature of the questioning of Dixon. He did say the matter had been dealt with by the club, and we believe it was certainly pointed out to Dixon in a very harsh way that a continuation of such behaviour would not be tolerated by the club. Uh, Dixon, uh, shortly after this uh, partying weekend, uh, was uh, diagnosed with a knee problem. He played his first match for Port Adelaide tonight. He kicked a goal in that Port win. We'll get more information on that uh, Port win over Richmond tonight shortly. Uh, Jim, the AFL's newest club, GWS, it's in off-field turmoil tonight. Uh, one of the uh, most influential directors of the club has quit his position on the board and he's also pulled $1 million of annual funding that he's been giving the football club. Mm. The director's name is Paul Moore. His decision to quit follows a, a run-in with the chief executive, Dave Matthews. And the financial contributions that he's made have largely gone to the Giants' player academy. He has... Uh, we've been told that the dispute centres around him 
a belief of his that the money would only be given to the club on the proviso it goes to the academies and grassroots programs. He feels the money was being spent elsewhere and he's pulled that money. So where does that leave their academy? Because they take them very seriously in the northern states? They do. And it's a, it's a market that's very hard to get AFL money in. They've, uh, $85 million have gone to that club from the AFL in the past five years. It's already $20 million over budget. The, the academies effectively are in uh, some form of trouble right now because of that money being pulled. The, the money that uh, Paul Moore did put in also went to the Sydney Swans Academy as well. So he so has been putting in several million dollars over the last three to four years and had committed one million dollars annually this year and beyond. A director leaving the club, not the only one. Now we know that uh, Graham Allen's also leaving the club, Craig Lambert has left the club, Stephen Silvani has left the club, we know Tom Boyd has uh, left the club, Adam Trelaw, Cam McCarthy, fiasco of last year. They've also got a big fight too with uh, Lockie Whitfield, a former one, number one draft pick uh, who's uh, in the receipt already of some significant offers to return uh, to Victoria to play football next year. Uh, Jim, Jake Carlisle, uh, it's a very, very messy situation for him and his new club uh, as we speak. It's been made very clear to him in recent times that the Saints will not be paying one cent uh, while he is serving this WADA ban and he's going to take legal action in some form to get paid from someone this year. Both parties, the Carlisle party and the Saints party this week, were absolutely adamant that they're committed to a future together. But the facts are, Carlisle has yet to, yet, yet to establish any meaningful relationship with anyone at that football club and he's now going to be embroiled in legal action that does involve the Saints in some way. So he's going to sue a club he hasn't played a game for yet? That could well be the outcome <laughs> as part of this uh, requirement for him to get some money coming in. Jim, just the other players who are now no longer at Essendon. Jake Melksham's in the same situation, Melbourne not paying him. We also believe Paddy Ryder and Angus Monfries yet to be paid by Port Adelaide since the water ban went down. Stuart Cramery, though, we believe has been paid by the Bulldogs, uh, at least for the February portion of the contract he's gotten. Look, we don't need any more evidence that uh, Luke Hodge is a tough man. We're going to get to get it anyway this year. He has got a very badly damaged little finger on his right hand. The bone recently came out. It severed a tendon very badly. A mere mortal would have been having surgery and missing a number of weeks. He's not. He's going to be playing through it with a protective cast uh, regularly throughout the course of the year as he goes for premiership number four in a row and number five in total in his career. And we just touched on that NAB Cup match played at Etihad Stadium tonight, Jim. Port Adelaide uh, winning over Richmond, but the uh, the toll for Richmond's pretty significant for, on an injury front. Shane Edwards suspected broken collarbone, Reese Conqueror, a hamstring, and also Grigg with a, a problem with a, a hand of some description. This is not the time of year you want injuries. Thank Damien Barrett, everyone, as I said, the best in the business, bar none. Breaking the stories already. Now, Street talk is something we need to address with you, Samuel, because yep. uh, it is a magnificent part of this show. Uh, in recent times, it has become a frenzy of people coming to us and requesting your presence <laughs> at their events. <laughs> Am I wrong? Now, look, um, we've been doing street talk for 22 years, yep. and it would be fair to say that uh, when we get out of the car, it can go two ways. Yes. It can go this way. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Bowl, buddy. I better get back in before they fog me car, mate. <laughs> <laughs> or it can go this way. <laughs> now, before we get before we get banned yes. from every town in Australia, we thought we'd only go to places that we get an invitation to. So, here we go. So this year, Street yes. Talk is strictly by invitation That's only. It. So if you have a rock concert yep. above Mitzvah, yes. a uh, snot block bake-off, which is a vanilla slice bake-off, yep. or you are de-sexing animals and you have an Estetford for that, yep. uh, and you want us to come out and interview the folk <laughs> who are part of uh, the revelry yep. and gaiety and memorabilia, Give us a call. A muscle and, uh, car muster. It uh, can uh, be uh, in a it. tractor pull. That's it. You do uh, weddings? Hey? Will you go to a wedding? Bar mitzvahs, weddings, anything, Shane. Anything. Parties. Anything. All right, well, I'll tell you what you need to do. If you want Sam to appear in Street Talk at your event, this is how you do it. Street Talk at 9.com.au. Tell us in as few words as possible so we don't embroil our staff in hours of work. Why our great man should head out and uh, conduct street talk at your event. That's it. Wow. And Amen. then uh, when you complain about the numbskulls we speak to, uh, don't forget you invited us. <laughs> <laughs> now, 
I mentioned this uh, just a moment ago. We have a brand new segment that, uh, with great trepidation, Ooh. we take on tonight for years at the footy show. After the show's finished, yep. uh, Sam and uh, Gaz or myself and Bill stand up and take questions from uh, the magnificent live studio audience. 99 out of 100 questions are aimed at Sam. Yeah. And they are extraordinary. They're fruity. So they are, Bill. They're fruity, different. aren't they, yep. Fruity different. is another word you could yep. use. So what we've done tonight is every member of our studio audience has had a piece of paper and a pen. They've been able to put a question down that they've always wanted Sam to answer. Have a look. Oh. So this is the studio audience tonight. And they are writing down the question they have always wanted to ask the one and the only Sam Newman. Now, Sam hasn't seen any of these questions. So, at the end of the show, we're waiting, uh, BJ, right to the end so that if there's anything too bad, we can just knock it on the head and finish. Uh, but that is coming up, so I suggest you do not go anywhere. No sitting on the fence either. Yeah. Yeah. No. H has it been lost on you that I'm doing a lot more heavy lifting this year? <laughs> As anything I'm not doing, is Gary available shortly to come back? Uh, you just get your A Bill, game going when the questions come out. Up with you, uh, <laughs> what the Foss is what it's called. That is still to come along with plenty more on the footy show. <laughs> Still to come, the force unleashes the contents of the mailbag, and it ain't pretty. The footy community comes together for a great cause. In our brand spanking new segment, the audience throws the pedal some curly ones. What the boss? Plus all the babysitting mayhem of my kids with Grandpa Sam. Stay with us. Show. I'm down in the audience, obviously, with a very special man, Nick Murray, who's young bloke Will in the off-season. Uh, this is one of the most talented young footballers in the country for his age, a 14-year-old, had a, a terrible accident while at the beach and uh, now won't be playing footy. And, Nick, I know that um, this is a well-publicised story, lots of people know about it, and everyone I've ever spoken to about your young bloke Will says that he's just an extraordinary young man. Tell us what happened. Yeah, he was, um, he was down the beach with a, a bunch of mates, um, at Black Rock, like they were, they were swimming as they as they normally do, and um, he they rang up and said they you know they'd had enough and they wanted to come home. I jumped in the car to go down there, and uh, when I got there, I couldn't find him, couldn't find any of his friends, and thought you know they'd gone home. Um, a few phone calls, a few text messages. Went back home, halfway home, got a call, come back down. He'd uh, he'd gone off the pier and um, obviously. Hit his head, and uh, yeah. When by the time I got back there, he there was an ambulance there. He was on a on a stretcher with a neck brace on, and that's how I first saw him. All right. Now th this is a, a young man who was the captain of the Victorian uh, under 12s, and universally acknowledged as being an elite young footballer who was going to play a lot of AFL footy. So how is he with everything that's happened to him? Um, look, he's um, he's doing remarkably well. Um, I don't think um, I'd be doing as well as as he is if um, it was me in his situation. Um, you know, he he was the sort of kid that always took life sort of one day at a time, and he's and that's how he's approaching things at the moment, which seems to be holding him in good stead. Ah, oh, it's brilliant. You, we've got some of your uh, he, or his teammates here and coaches and family members of the what is a wonderful football club, the Sandy Zebras. Um, we, we decided to send a crew down to the Zebras, actually, to find out a little more about what an amazing young man Will is. We spoke to his coach and a couple of his teammates. Take a look. Will was the sort of kid when he played on the ground, he was almost too big for the ground. That sort of presence will really be, be hard to feel. I mean, I know other, other teams were not so much intimidated by Will, but it was like, you know, who's going to play on Will Murray? He was coming down this wing right here, and he, from 40 metres out, did a massive banana kick, went straight through the middle, the whole crowd stood up, cheered, everyone got around him. It was one of the, one of the best things I've ever seen. He won several best and fairest over the years. He last year won the uh, won the league best and fairest. He also played um, in the state under 12 team and was vice captain of that team. Best kick in the team, best mark, got the ball. He was strong, broke every tackle. I was always trying to tell the team we can do this, we can win this game. And he never really gave up. There is a massive hole to fill and a massive hole emotionally as well as skill wise. It was shock at first seeing him like that, like he's a really physical, active boy and seeing him just unable to move is just 
was sad and shocking. He was still Will. He hadn't he hadn't changed. He was still himself and he was still cracking jokes and everything, so that was good to see. This year, I think everyone's going to be wanting to do it for Will, but I think it's going to inspire everyone to work that bit harder. When you break it down, you know, Will Murray's not going to be OK. He's not going to be able to walk, and he's, he's going to need a lot of care. As blunt as it sounds, the way people can help is to, is to make a financial contribution and please donate, because you'll be helping a, a beautiful family and a, and a ripper young boy. I would definitely recommend donating to Will and his family to help support them at wherethersawill.com.au. 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 As a father of four boys myself, I can only imagine what you're going through with your family and the amazing people, as I said, at that footy club. But we need to be aware of something, and that is because the accident happened at the beach and not playing footy, um, it's hard to fund all the programs that he now needs. Is that right? Yeah, so if it had to happen playing footy or on the road, you know, there would have been yep. TAC or insurance. So, um, yeah, we need to do everything that we can to give him every opportunity, you know, for his um, rehab in the short term, but, yeah, for the rest of his life. OK, so how do people help again? Where there's a will.com.au? Yep. yep. And they just get on and it's simple to, to help. Yeah, they can, they can uh, make a pledge. Um, there's an option to, do, you know, give a dollar a day or they can make a donation, whatever, you know, whatever they can do would be greatly appreciated. Well, our great friends at Sportsbet who always jump in and help straight away have donated $10,000, which is absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Jump on and uh, help out here because as much as support and all the rest of it's great, it does come down to dollars and cents in the end. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and big thanks to to the Footy Show and the Sports Bet. It, that's a wonderful contribution. Thank you. Hey, you've been very brave coming on. We really appreciate it. As I say, I've, I've heard a lot about this young man, and he must be an extraordinary young man. And we wish him well with his journey and you and your family and your footy club. Please thank Nick. Best. We're going to have a look at the Richmond side for 2016. In comes Yaron from Carlton, Townsend from GWS, Moore uh, coming across from Port Adelaide, Dean Rioli, the cousin of Cyril, uh, Mark off Broad, Mark on Cole and Moore. Out goes uh, the wonderful Chris Newman, Nathan Foley, Chris Knights and it goes on. But uh, a big year for the Tigers, you know, they're ready to fire. I reckon they're going to play in finals and I reckon they've got every chance, Foss, to... Uh, Show everyone what they really mean. Which Rioli was that, Shane? Um, that was Daniel Rioli. Uh, what did I say? Dean. Dean Rioli. He was a very good player. <laughs> yes, indeed. Hey, um, just on an update of the Ch NAB Challenge yes, game but... tonight. He was a good player. Uh, unfortunately, uh, bad news for the Richmond supporters. Port Adelaide have won that game by 48 points. And a huge injury toll, as uh, Damo told us. Shane Edwards... Sean Gregg and Reese Conker have all been injured. Uh, Richmond ended up with 15 players on the ground, mm. Jim. Uh, so that's not a good night. And just on that, um, Will's mum, is this right, that uh, she was on the Richmond bench tonight? Hence the reason why she wasn't able to be here. Which that's she was right. going to be, and she's actually working for the Tigers. Working for the Tigers, sitting yep. on the bench tonight. Mindfulness so. coach, so that's why she couldn't be here. Mm. Hey, speaking of which, um, Will also received uh, a great note of support from you, BJ, which I know he's really pleased with. Oh, yeah, I didn't want to talk about it but um yeah look i had been in touch with nick and will um and i said to will uh, in a piece that if he stays positive and sticks to his rehab that uh we could go out together uh in my 300th game next year through the banner so well that'd be absolutely yeah, brilliant well done. all right Going about street talk a different way, as we said, you can invite Sam to come out and conduct street talk at your event, but this one here, Bill, I suspect is going to be done the same way it has been mm. for 22 and a bit years. Put your hands together, because it is time for Sam's Mailbag! Oh. 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 Come on, Foss! Uh, sometimes I get the pronunciations wrong, Bill, and Jim, who usually sits there, corrects yes. me, but I oh. think I'm on my own here now. No, no, you'll be <laughs> right. Um, from Jules, Jules of Mildura. Mm. Hey, Sammy. Well done. <laughs> so excited, my gorgeous Jimmy Brayshaw is hosting this year. Mm. Clean up the show, Jimmy. <laughs> Clean up the show, Jimmy. Yes, Sam, yeah. any merch, merch. Merchandise. Dice. <laughs> dice. And dice. 
<laughs> Any merch you have of my fave oh, no. Instagram man, please send through. <laughs> I have no idea what that means. I'm just reading it. Instagram. <laughs> Um, Insta and yeah. merchandise. Yeah. Instagram. I'm Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you say Instagram? <laughs> you are an idiot. Oh, yes, go grappling on. with the English language. Uh, now, right, oh, so we've got some. Uh, we've got a bit of uh, merch. Uh, now, this is a. Uh, this is a. Um, a, a gym doll. Is. This is before. <laughs> let me skip oh, the wrong. Really? <laughs> this is before. This is this before. Is it, yes. Yeah. He was uh, named as the host. Yes. Look this at is that. him. There he is. There. Two Jim. No, and then, when no. you were announced as the host, they brought out another one. Oh no! Did and they? this oh, is no. the other one. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's, um, that's awfully humorous, no. Jim. And, uh, <laughs> it's, it's not, not and how true. Nothing has been more true than that. Uh, you're um, off to a ripping start. Righto. Probably. Righto, hang on. And, just, and if Bill ever wants a stand in this year, he should try my cousin Brett, who was on hot seat last year. Here's. Uh, <laughs> this is. <laughs> not this bad. is uh, not bad. <laughs> Uh, we actually, now look, we <laughs> actually had Brett on standby this week because we're not sure if Bill would make it, yes. uh, but he has, so let's not waste uh, the yeah. appearance of uh, Bre young yes. Brettland. <laughs> let's bring him on. So uh, here is a present for you, Bill. Here yeah, is here Brett. Is. He's fatter than me. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Brady boy. Oh, here, no, we here, we are, Bill. here we go. Here we go. Have a seat, Brett. I thought you'd appreciate that, Bill. Oh, good. Yeah, let's put this on. Now, Brett. <laughs> 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 Oh, no. Have you had as interesting a summer as Bill? Yeah. Not quite. No. No, 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 no. Since me in your hot seat, everything's been going pretty uh, smoothly. <laughs> Look yeah. at you, stupid what man. have you been up to? Oh, close to six foot two, Bill, but you know, yeah, we're what not growing any taller, are we? What are you weighing in at? 138. I was going to say, you're a big boy. I was, <laughs> I was 190. Yeah. How much did you win on the hot seat? 120,000. Oh, oh, good. Nice. Yeah. I'll yeah. tell you what we love, yeah. Brett, is A, you're coming in, which is always fantastic, but a, a, as a horrific segue, it allows us to play some of our most magnificent millionaire uh, vision ever. Have a look at this. Who was the first American <laughs> president? <laughs> oh. Now, look, shouldn't you know that? Well, it'd have to be Link, wouldn't it? Is it A, Abraham oh, Lincoln, isn't that D, James Madison, C, George Washington, or D, Andrew oh, Jackson? Oh, yeah. I know Washington no, I drove a Lincoln. Oh, <laughs> I tell you what, we don't know who Ed was actually talking to there. <laughs> so different than he looked back in the day. But, um, <laughs> for the first time, he actually told me the answer and I still got it wrong. <laughs> did did Alright, second letter. Uh, uh, second, second yes, yes, yes. Uh, Brett Stang. Brett Stang with us. Yes. All right, Brett that's Stang. Okay. That's in triplicate. We've had it. Uh -huh. uh, this is from Nina of... Uh... Greensborough. Hey, Newman, I see Dennis Cometti is retiring this year. Why, why, why couldn't it be you? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> remember... This man, Jim, he could replace Dennis. Yes. Do you remember him? This is a man that could have replaced Dennis. That's right. I'm not Dennis Committee, but I'm his cousin, Kevin. It's Van and Hoogan, Van and Thorpe. Thorpe, the inside Van and Hoogan, Van. There's not much between them. It's Thorpe, Van and Hoogan, Van. Peter, Van and Hoogan, Van. And Thorpe, they hit the line. I reckon Thorpe. Thorpe got there by a fingernail from Van and Hoogan, Van. I think Bert has gone to Alexander Popoff. No, it isn't. <laughs> Here we go. Now... Now he says, uh, Nina says, here is an idea for you since you seem bereft. Mm -hmm. Normally Bruce McAvaney calls the final siren of the grand final each year, but get him to let Dennis do it this year. Uh, or, as Bruce would say, gee whiz, could you, can you do Bruce? 
<laughs> not, very, not as good as you, Sam. No, we'll have a... Gee whiz, Gee whiz. don't you just get the feeling how special, <laughs> special it would be if we let Dennis call the game when the final siren goes, I would get firm. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, so, so, we're going to ask Bruce if just as a final... E I'm sorry about saying that was gratuitous stupidity uh, about uh, the... Uh, um, Anzac Day game yes. that Essendon shouldn't play. I was on the wrong. You were. That was you about were. the drugs. Yep. Uh, um, we're going to get Dennis. We're yes. going to have a campaign to get Dennis to call when he retires the final siren. Do it for do Dennis. It do, for it. Dennis. Do, do it for Dennis. Do it for Dennis. We can do that. So the petition. Is that Dennis? Yes. Early Dennis. It's like it's like Kate and Jenna. Young Dennis. Uh, Next. Do it, and, and, and do it for been... Dennis. So we're going to have start a campaign uh, as a final uh, send-off. Has what been you... one of the all-time broadcasting greats, yeah. Dennis. And I was a bit hasty when I said it was stupidity what he said right. about Third the game. <laughs> this is from Chad of New York. Ch Chad of New York. Yep. Yep. Dear Footy Show, congratulations on making the news over here. <laughs> oh, look at the moment. What are we doing? Oh. Brendan. After the segment, sir. <laughs> yes. We're dealing with squirrels over here, mate. Uh, congratulations, making the news over here. This is in New York. I know your show very well, having grown up in Maui. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'm from Maui! I'm from Maui! <laughs> <laughs> Maui, Maui, Maui. <laughs> yeah, another mm. reason why we're not doing uh, But for those <laughs> Americans that don't know uh, what our show's about, the news service here attached an example clip of your show. Guess what clip they used? Uh, was it a Damien Barrett exclusive? Was it Shane Crawford charity running from state to state? No, after 22 years on television, they showed this. This is Big Bill. Big Bill would like you to paint your own version of Jim's famous portrait <laughs> ramming the point home. <laughs> now, now, of all the things in 22 oh, no. years uh, that they showed on American <laughs> television... Seven Logies in yes. that time. A and it, it was inspired by uh, the... Uh, 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 the day, uh, Ramming the point. No, the standoff between you and Gary. That's what they said. That made the news oh, over right. in America. And they wanted to know what the yes. footy show was. Sort uh, that out, will you? What yeah, about the, there was a clipping, I think, that made the paper too, wasn't uh, it? It was. <laughs> it, 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 and it says... Um, and, and there was a clipping, yes. but, you, but this is what they said. Uh, as as you're reading going, Fox. Well, you, 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 you the, meant to say that. This is the Americans who watch the video. This is yeah. what they picked up on the most. This is your vernacular. We'll now have a better understanding of... Uh, the vermilion tip kidney prodder and the population, Rob. <laughs> uh, this was on American television. So um, I don't know if you're familiar with the vermilion tip kidney prodder. Do you know what that is? Not 100% sure. Population, uh, Rob? Mm. The population, Rob? It's the old John Thomas. <laughs> I understand now. Yeah. Uh, yes, might not come up on Millionaire, but uh, you, no, if no, it comes no. up, you'll know what it is. Look at the positive. We've gone global. That's it. That's a... Oh, what do you... Look at this. BJ. Oh. What there is some you resemblance to that <laughs> in the picture yeah. before. That's a tripod. I think it's got bigger arms than you anyway, uh, Jim. I think we're, um, I think we're uh, finished up on a nice early edition of Mailbag. Uh, yeah. Now listen, everybody, no, if you Jim. want to contribute, do it this way. GPO Box 9, Melbourne, uh, Victoria, 3001. Sam.mailbag at 9.com.au or footyshow.com.au. Now, we need to take a break because next, uh, Sam looked after yeah. Shane's twins. <laughs> When he didn't have to, because Croft wasn't even invited to Ruffy's wedding. It was hilarious. It's coming up next, so do not go anywhere on the floor. <laughs> Great to have you company on the footy show. Thanks to this and, of course, home timber and hardware. Go where the trading goes. And sportsbet.com.au. Download the mobile app today. Speaking of, listen who have been great friends of ours for a long time. Listen, I'm speaking about here. Uh, they have got some incredible prizes up for grabs over the course of this year, including an NP300 Navara, if you don't mind. It is magnificently easy to get involved. You're going to absolutely love it. Take a look.
Thanks to Nissan, our top tipster at the end of the season will win an MP300 Navara. That's over 50k worth of tough Nissan motor vehicle. There are also four runner-up prizes of flights, accommodation and tickets to the grand final footy show. Plus weekly prizes of $500 cash to be won. Head to wideworldofsports.com.au forward slash tipping for full T's and C's and to get your tips in now. For grabs, so get stuck into that and uh, it'll rough. When did you get married? How long ago was it, Split? Uh, January the 30th. January the 30th, okay. Yep. So on that very day, Shane told <laughs> Sam that he was attending the wedding and therefore Sam needed to come round and babysit his kids. Uh, it turns out we found out earlier that Shane wasn't even invited to the wedding and yes. just buggered off to do something else. But what it meant was that for more than two oh, hours, wonderful. Sam had to babysit the twins who are how old, Shane? They are four. Okay. <laughs> and carnage ensued. Take a look. Well, I'm a hitcherite, like a big pizza pie, that's so alright. Oh, no. Hey, 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 come on. Here we go. Oh, Grandpa Sam's here. This is his hello. house. Hi. Hello, hello, oh. hello, boys. How are you? Yeah. Say hello. How are you? Hi. Say hello who? Yes. How, how, how are you? Uh, Hello, Grandpa uh, Sam. What's your name? Yeah, what? Tell Grandpa Sam your name. What's, what's your name? Jack. Jack. What's your name? Jack. 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 Um, thank you so much for doing this. This is awesome. I can't how, believe how, you. How, how long will you be away, Jack? No, not too long. I won't. I've left the list how, here. How long? Oh, maybe an hour. Um, Just a meal. Oh, Jesus. Here's your meal. Uh, you're Jack or Harry? Jack. Jack. Well, Harry? He's a tall. We want Come we and sit here. Chippy sit warm. up. We know warm. The, the chips aren't warm. What? Yummy. Chippies. What's, what's wrong? Cold. You're not eating those sweets, are you? <laughs> Who can do that? Me? You couldn't do that. Come here. I'll give you. Now sit down. Who can do that? Can you do the Rubik's Cube? No, no one could do the Rubik's Cube. I'll, I'll, I'm going to put on a puppet show for you in a minute. Puppet show. See, you can't do it. No good. See, it's too hard. That's so only, hard. only very smart people can do that. Extraordinary. <laughs> Where are you? Oh. Righto. What, what do you need to go? What? Bathroom. Just a minute. Do you need to do we or or poo? Come on then. You got to go to the bathroom. I already know how we. All right. I'm ringing you, Shane. Shane? Yeah. It's Sam. Oh, it's going great. Yeah. No, they're fantastic. They're locked in the cars at the minute. I can't get them out. I've had it, mate. I don't know how... Boys! I'm speaking to your dad on the phone. They're here. They've come out of the toilet. Jesus Christ. Steady, son. Steady. May your days be merry and bright. And may all your Christmases be white. Not bad, eh? Sing us a song. Oh, Christmas. Said, oh, it is Christmas. Now, we're going to play hide and seek. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right, I'm coming. Let's see if I can find you. Okay. Now, I wonder where Jack and Harry are. I bet they're under this thing again. I. I, they weren't there the last time. Pinka blue! Pinka blue! Pinka blue! Pinka blue! Oh! Yeah, oh, there you are! Oh, there you are! I'm hopping in the door cage. Uh, 
Let's have a potato sack race. <laughs> On your marks. Get set. Go. Hey, hey, hey. Mate, that's... It's pretty dangerous stuff. Hello? Hi. Oh, Shane, thanks. How's it Shane. Going? Hi. Shane, give Hello. me a hug. What's Don't worry about them. Thank God you're here. Thank You've you. You've never been so pleased. How did you go? To see anyone in their life. Fantastic. How did you go, Jack? No, it's did been you have just fun? A... Yes. Oh, oh was... that's good. Oh. You know, Thank you so much. It was an awesome wedding. It was fantastic. <laughs> Ruffy looked great. Listen, what do you say to Grandpa Sam for having you? Put it away. Okay. Well, not, not a lot. <laughs> what um... do you say to Grandpa Sam? Thank you, Grandpa Sam. Good yeah, boys. Thank you. How sincere. Would you like to come back again? Oh, no. 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 Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Don't. Hey. Shane, thanks for that. <laughs> Have you taught your children any manners Nothing. or obedience at all? No, it's who's in charge of them. Really? Uh, obviously no control whatsoever, mm. but uh, thank you for doing that. And oh. Maybe every Friday I'll drop around yes. for a couple hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, new, new job. Oh, and how, how beautiful. Oh. The cats we need to have oh, a look at. Your beloved cats, cats are ready to go. Um, had a good win against Essendon last week. The inns, of course, or these are the inns here. Patrick Dangerfield's Ooh. been outstanding Ooh. in look two at games. You go. Zach Smith has been exceptional. A ruckman that can jump. Who would have thought, Foss? Uh, Selwood hasn't played yet. Lockie Henderson's been okay, but he'll be a very important player. And the outs, there are some big outs here. Lost a lot of experience through Stephen Johnson, of course. Uh, James Kelly, Matty Stokes, uh, Jared Rivers and Hamish McIntosh. A lot of experience gone there. A tenth on the ladder last year, so they've got to make the finals this year, you would have thought. And you've got to feel for Jackson Thurlow, who did his knee on the weekend. Yeah. He's going to miss a year. Elite kick, uh, Jackson Thurlow. But uh, I'll tell you what, they're going beautiful. The boy Dangerfield can play. All right, Bill. I mentioned <laughs> right at the start of the show that people needed to welcome two greats of the Geelong Football Club, but this week you lost a great of the Geelong Football Club. No, we did, mate. It, and, and I mentioned before, he was only 51, he went for a bike ride and Paul Couch didn't come back. And uh, Couch, he was a superstar, a great player, a Brownlow medalist and uh, All-Australian, three cat uh, best and fairest there, named yep. in the Geelong's Team of the Century alongside this man. But more than that, he was a great husband to Geraldine and he was a great father to his four kids, mate. And he'll be missed. He'll be, they, they loved him. Yep. And he loved them. And it's just a sad, sad story. Uh, we'll bury him on uh, Tuesday at um, Simmons Stadium. I think at 2.10 uh, and yep. all the supporters can come along. Yep. And, uh, and then we're having a lap, a, a lap of honour for Couchy, who was just a, a fantastic bloke. And I was on uh, having a couple of beers with him because he loved to punt too. That's yep. what he did. And he was tight. He was very tight. A lot of footballers are tight. These two over here, but he was, and, and he loved it. In other bet. words, he didn't like parting with and his buddies. Us, yeah. was thrifty, Bill. He was, was thrifty. thrifty. And three weeks ago, I took this photo of him, and this is Paul Couch. He's happy, he's cheeky, he's loving life, mate. And uh, he actually had a win. I said, get over there and buy two jugs of beer. We need a frothy. So he went over there, he brought back those two jugs of beer. I could not believe it, so I actually took a photo of that. And who would have thought ago that three that's three weeks ago? And I took a photo of it, and he, he poured us all a beer, and we just kept on punting and drinking and having a great time. And then I found out later that he'd actually charged it to the pub. He put it on the tab. Put it on the tab. He didn't even pay for that. But mate, he's a ripper. We love him. Uh, and you just cannot believe he's gone, Jim. You cannot believe he's gone. Well, I know you wanted to just take a moment, Bill, to uh, say something to Geraldine and the kids on yeah. behalf of yeah, exactly. the, the great friendship you've had. So I think you've done that unbelievably well. Uh, this was an incredible footballer, by the way. Uh, as Bill said, his achievements during his playing time were quite extraordinary. Oh, brand spanking new season of the footy show, of course, continues next week. One of our all-time favourites, Dane Swan. In the house after a huge summer, Husey back with a bang. And make no mistake, he'll be pulling no punches with the players again in 2016. We roll out the red carpet for the very first of our best in footy show challenges. Uh, just be careful where the hands go, Forsler. And 
The next generation of footy superstars join us live in studio. These are the draftees, including last year's number one pick from the Blues, Jacob Wiedering. That's all to look forward to next week on a big edition of the Footy Show. Now, what the Foss is uh, a new initiative. We get everyone in the audience to uh, write down a question a they've always wanted to ask Sam. And Shane, you have them over there? Well, this, well, is, a, this is a stitch up. Because I really don't know which key. But no, um, anyway, yeah, you do yeah, this. Right. Okay. You have a crank of that. And right. I, can we do the Melbourne Get thing? Get stuck into the demons, yeah, let's everybody. Into the D's. Yep. So keep working on that, PJ. Uh, big year for the D's. Uh, Thomas Bug from GWS coming in. Ben Kennedy from Collingwood. Melcham, who can't play, uh, has come from Essendon. Uh, Oliver, Weedman, uh, King, um, and on and on. And Jeremy Howe leaves. He moves on. Tumpus goes to Port Adelaide. Fitzpatrick to Hawthorne. Uh, and Jayma is making a bit of a comeback and going to play with the Bombers. So. A big moving year for your, uh, a big moving year for uh, the, the D's. I think they're going on the right track. I think they've got some really good young talent. Hey, uh, BJ, you're Beach. playing in round two, and you've got a special event. Is that right? Ah, uh, yes. It's the club's <laughs> launched. A, well, he's got me. You, you stitched me up here, or what? Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. That's it. You, you do that. And... Uh, yeah, they launched a campaign, uh, the Stand Up Make a Stand campaign. Um, and it's not, a, it's not a thing of defiance or anything of what happens. It's about making a stand for the future of the footy club and moving forward. And we're going to do a few little things before the game. Um, a few past players are going to be involved with the current playing group. Um, and it's important supporters come along because through all of this, they've been the most loyal and most supportive people out of it yep. all. And we can't thank them enough. So get along. Um, it's going to be a walk, actually, Sam, from the city to the ground. Yes. And I'm just form formally inviting you. Formally. Oh. Formally, that's yep. what I said. Yes. Uh, because you've been such a great support for us in the last three and a half years oh. that you take part in the walk and lead the charge from the front. So oh. there's the Get invite. Get a there. Oh. There's a formal a invite. There'll be a fee involved. Oh. <laughs> I might write your receipt, so that's All right. okay. All right. uh, BJ, your club, Shane, Jeez. Your club's ability to not only maintain but increase mm. membership and the corporate dollar and all the rest of it has been. And just, just so everyone knows everyone. too that uh, we're about to hit 50,000 members. Yeah, uh, right. <laughs> okay, not having a right. Second time he's taking control up. here, please. Right, look, he's, there's Seriously? no point trying to control Shane. We're going to take a break. Crowd questions. Ooh. What the Foss what after the this? <laughs> Tonight been a very nice opening show and we thank everyone for coming in here, of course, and watching at home has been sensational. Yeah. Family Day coming up, Jared Roughhead for the Hawks. Tell us a bit about that. Yeah, 18th of March. We've changed it up this year. We're going to a Friday night, which will be very, very good. Uh, so from 5.30 till 8 o'clock there'll be festivities and a night market. So good feel and a good start to the weekend for Out all the Hawks Waverley. fans. Out at uh, Glen Ferry Oval. Glen Ferry Oval. Yes. Oh, the old uh, traditional home ground. Yep, so very nice. Very, very nice. All right, so we said at the start of the show we're doing something a little edgy. It's called What the Foss and uh, what happens here. We've got a sting for it, but just hold it for a minute. Anyone in the audience who's got a question they've always mm. wanted to ask Sam, mm. got to write it down before the show. Sam hasn't seen any of these. They're going to be read out by our panellists. Let's start with the sting. Right. Ruff, let's start with you. Yep. So mine comes from uh, Sam Nico. Sam, where are you? Sam. We got Sam. Here he is. Just here. here. He is, Sammy. Right uh, up. His question to you, Sam, was who was the better footballer, yourself or Shane Crawford? Oh, please. <laughs> please. Uh, well, uh, Nico, is it? Sam, yep. Yep. What? Sam Nico. Yeah. Sam. Sam, Sam. Nico. Yeah. Okay, Sam. Um, <laughs> you wouldn't have been around, of course, when I was playing, mate, but no. uh, it gets down to this. Uh, <laughs> do you want big, strong, powerful people to get the ball out of the ruck and the pack and get it down to the small dwarf-like creatures <laughs> who annoy the shit out of most people. <laughs> Big is better, mate, and that's all I can all say. Right, he I was like a that. great player, but I was greater. Yeah. We're off to a nice start. <laughs> there he is. Oh, there you go. There there is. Is. Here, this is how you do a blind that's turn. That's a blind turn. Whoop. I love it. Righto, BJ. Now, Samuel. Uh, Tim Williams. Where, where's Tim? Willow. There he is, right up the back, Timmy. Ooh, Stand up. Thanks, Tim. Yeah. Good, Stand up, Tim. Good Essendon man. Right what's his question? Good question. 
Is Raylene Boyle a good kisser? Oh. <laughs> well, I don't think I'm speaking out of school because yes. Raylene probably know this. I hastened her decision to give up men. I think I can. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 she has acknowledged that. She has acknowledged yeah. that publicly. Yeah. Uh, not one of my best performances. I <laughs> invited her around to a house many years ago to exercise the option, okay. and, um, <laughs> um, and she was um, and very Su suitably disappointed. Yeah, yes. Mate, she was a champion Australian athlete. And she was. She was How like long? A, How long? Built like a crowbar. Uh. She was. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I got over and. <laughs> I got over in, over on, over enthused. The only time I ever met her, and uh, lasted five right. seconds. I did. Um, she, she actually said, "If you bite on a damn oh, yes. hanky, you might get ten seconds oh, yes. out of yourself." But five seconds. She said, "Is that it?" I said, "That's it." She said, "Okay, let's move on." That's it. Last question. <laughs> That's uh, from Alicia <laughs> King. Where are you, Alicia? Alicia, there she Alicia, is. There's you Alicia. have a very sick mind. Um, here we go. Would you or have you ever donated sperm? <laughs> have I? Yes. Uh, <laughs> Alicia, oh, as I sit Jim. here, I haven't, but if you'd like no. me to. <laughs> Not sure whether or not will appear next week on our show. <laughs> Lisa. Thank you to Jared Ruffhead, who's been sensational. Thank you to Ben and Well done, Sam. Well done, Bill. Very nice. Thank you. We'll see you all next week on the footy.